When the Philistines captured the Ark of the Covenant in 1 Samuel, it turned out to be more than they had bargained for. The Ark of God wasn't something for anyone to be messing with. The Ark began a campaign of destruction in Philistia. Allow me to give some quick background information on this first. In 1 Samuel 3, Samuel was still a boy, and he was given a vision from God. This vision consisted of the sons of Eli, an Israelite judge. These sons had brought heinous sin into the land of Israel, and this displeased God tremendously. Their father, Eli, did not restrain them or rebuke them for their sins. Though he was well aware of these things, he looked past them. They got off scot-free, the entitled sons of an Israelite judge. The sons likely also led others into their evil practices. Samuel was shown that Eli's household in Israel were about to be judged. God said in 1 Samuel 3, 4, The iniquity of Eli's house shall not be atoned for by sacrifice or offering forever. Eli asked Samuel that he fill him in on the vision, and Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. Judgment was coming in the form of the Philistines. The Israelites went out to battle against them, and they camped in Ebenezer. The Philistines camped in nearby Aphek. During the melee, the Israelites lost about 4,000 men. Then the Israelites decide to send for the Ark of the Covenant, which was in Shiloh, that when it comes among us, it may save us from the hand of our enemies. So the Ark arrived, and Eli's two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, the two sons in question, came with the Ark. 1 Samuel 4, 10 and 11. So the Philistines fought, and Israel was defeated, and every man fled to his tent. There was a very great slaughter, and there fell of Israel 30,000 foot soldiers. Also the ark of God was captured, and the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, died. 89-year-old Eli the judge was given the news of his two sons' deaths, and upon hearing of the capture of the ark of the covenant as well, he fell backwards off of his seat, broke his neck on a gate, and he died. The Israelites had used the ark against their enemies in battle before, and it had been very effective. Yet this time, the Almighty made it ineffective for them. Though the Israelites had carried it into battle, it was captured. Eli's two sons were among those who brought it from Shiloh, and apparently God held back the ark's power. The Israelites lost 30,000 more men. The Philistines took the Ark of the Covenant into their city stronghold of Ashdod, and we will soon see that God wasn't fond of that idea at all. The Philistines worshipped various false gods, including Dagon. The Philistines captured the Ark of the Covenant, and they placed it in their temple of Dagon. It was put beside the statue of Dagon. This was a big mistake, and bad things started to happen. 1 Samuel 5, 1-8 through 8. Then the Philistines took the ark of God and brought it from Ebenezer to Ashdod. When the Philistines took the ark of God, they brought it into the house of Dagon and set it by Dagon. And when the people of Ashdod arose early in the morning, there was Dagon fallen on its face to the earth before the ark of the Lord. So they took Dagon and set it in its place again. And when they arose early the next morning, there was Dagon, fallen on its face to the ground before the ark of the Lord. The head of Dagon and both the palms of its hands were broken off on the threshold. Only Dagon's torso was left of it. Therefore, neither the priests of Dagon nor any who come into Dagon's house tread on the threshold of Dagon in Ashdod to this day. But the hand of the Lord was heavy on the people of Ashdod, and he ravaged them and struck them with tumors, both Ashdod and its territory. And when the men of Ashdod saw how it was, they said, The ark of the God of Israel must not remain with us, for his hand is harsh toward us and Dagon our God. Therefore they sent and gathered to themselves all the lords of the Philistines and said, What shall we do with the ark of the God of Israel? And they answered, let the ark of the God of Israel be carried away to Gath, 
so they carried the Ark of the God of Israel away. The Ark of the Covenant wasn't the prize that the Philistines had hoped for. It was a rather unruly guest in Ashdod. So next, they decided to move it to Gath, the hometown of Goliath and his four brothers. As a note, David hadn't battled Goliath yet. He wouldn't face Goliath for another 12 chapters in this book of 1 Samuel we are reading from. So it is possible that Goliath and his brothers were in Gath when the ark was there. It seems as though God is rebuking the Philistines for placing his ark in the temple of their false god, directly beside their false god, Dagon. The ark hadn't won the Israelites the victory that they had hoped for, yet now it was doing things on its own, without the Israelites. It was God's power in action. Let's continue now to see how the ark of the covenant worked out for them in Gath. 1 Samuel 5.9 so it was, after they had carried it away, that the hand of the Lord was against the city with a very great destruction, and he struck the men of the city, both small and great, and tumors broke out on them. Gath didn't work either, and again the Philistines were tormented by the ark, so they tried to move it again. It was being passed around like a hot potato. Possession of the ark was very bad news for the Philistines, Every time it arrived in one of their cities, it caused misery, destruction, and torment. Next on the list was the city of Ekron. 1 Samuel 5.10 Therefore they sent the ark of God to Ekron. So it was, as the ark of God came to Ekron, that the Ekronites cried out, saying, They have brought the ark of the God of Israel to us to kill us and our people. It's probable that Ekron had already heard of the horrors of the Ark, and now it was coming to them. The Ark of the Covenant was destroying the Philistines, and now it was Ekron's turn. Their countrymen were dumping it on them. The people cried out that it was going to kill them. Though the Philistines had captured the Ark in battle, it wasn't theirs for the taking. Nor was it their place to put it beside their false god inside of its pagan temple. God was making this all very clear to them. 1 Samuel 5, 11 and 12. So they sent and gathered together all the lords of the Philistines and said, Send away the ark of the God of Israel and let it go back to its own place, so that it does not kill us and our people. For there was a deadly destruction throughout all the city. The hand of God was very heavy there. And the men who did not die were stricken with the tumors, and the cry of the city went up to heaven. They were in panic mode. None of the Philistine cities wanted the ark because it was destroying them. They held on to it for seven long months, and they finally decided to get rid of it. 1 Samuel 6, 2 And the Philistines called for the priests and the diviners, saying, What shall we do with the ark of the Lord? Tell us how we should send it to its place. They were sending it back to Israel. They would accompany it with a trespass offering. They gave five of these offerings, one for each of their cities, Ashdod, Gaza, Ashkelon, Gath, and Ekron. The sooner it was gone, the better. There is no biblical record of it traveling to Gaza or Ashkelon. Hence, it had been in three of Philistia's five cities, and that was plenty enough for the Philistines. Then, while they were delivering it back to Israel, some of the men that were transporting it decided it would be a good idea to look inside of the ark. This didn't work out so well for them. 1 Samuel 6, 19 and 20. Then he struck the men of Beth Shemesh, because they had looked into the ark of the Lord. He struck 50,070 men of the people. And the people lamented because the Lord had struck the people with a great slaughter. And the men of Beth Shemesh said, Who is able to stand before this holy Lord God? And to whom shall it go up from us? Remember also that in First Chronicles 13.10, an Israelite named Uzzah touched the ark to steady it while it was being moved, and God struck him dead. The ark of the covenant is a powerhouse of God's strength and it is highly protected by God. Where it is now is a mystery, but it does make a future appearance in Revelation 11.19 in the temple of God in heaven, where it will be accompanied with lightnings, noises, 
thunderings, an earthquake, and great hail. It will make this appearance after the seventh trumpet judgment has sounded. The ark was returned to Israel, and I imagine that the Philistines said good riddance to it. They never tried to take it again.